Hello, fellow countrymen. Article 3, Section 3 of the United States Constitution relates to the issue of treason. This article states that treason against the United States shall consist only of levying war against them or adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and support. However, with the constantly widening scope of vulnerability that the United States comes in contact with, I feel it lacking that treason be defined in such strict terms. Unlike under revolutionary law, today's threats of treason expand far from simple armed demands, but into the realm of national intelligence and security. It is predicted that over 70% of all federal information from the last 15 years is stored digitally and thus made vulnerable to hackers and viruses, such attacks that aren't yet classified as treason. Similarly, I believe that the theory of treason should apply not only to attacks against the federal or state government, but any deliberate attack on the populace of America or intended disruption of our well-functioning society. Attacks on the power grid, national infrastructure, and national economy shall too be subject to convictions of treason and subject to the same trials as outside terrorists against such same vulnerabilities. I'd like to thank you for your time and consideration. One. Amendment 16 of the Constitution of the United States says that, that the income tax that the origins of the amendment go back to overcome the Supreme Court decision and the amendment authorized and an income tax which is levied on a direction basis. Meaning that the government taxes the amount of money that a person makes a year. We should take the income tax and not base it on how much the people make, but base it on a flat rate of tax, such as 7%. People with lower incomes can't afford a tax based on the how much they make. A flat rate of 7% would make it so that all citizens in the United States that make a yearly salary would be paying an equal amount and everybody would be equal as to how much they pay. This could help improve our economy by giving those with lower incomes, giving them their money back and with people with lower incomes will be more focused on purchasing things that the government already taxes such as car registration, gas, and other things. No income tax and having a flat rate income tax would put more money back into our economy and back into our communities. And that is all. English should be made the official language of the United States. Doing this would create a more united nation there are many cities in our country that already have predominantly Spanish-speaking citizens, and we know Canada is bilingual and doing just fine, but we don't really want to be like Canada with territory set up with language barriers. 94% of Americans already speak English, and we believe that we should include the last 6% so there's not a minority anymore. Ma Adding this amendment would better the standards and results of immigration. This would give equal opportunity to all citizens because everyone would be speaking the same language and no one would be favored for just knowing a language. People getting jobs would be more based on their skills rather than the languages they speak. Speaking English would be required to become a citizen of the United States. This would make immigrants that come to our country more productive when they do get jobs because they would be able to cater to all citizens and not just Spanish speaking ones. Adding this amendment would save money and effort for our government. 52 countries already have English as their official language and 31 states already have official Engli English laws. Not having to print all documents in all different languages would save our government money. We're not saying you can't speak any language you want with this amendment. Rather, you just have to know English. I believe that a state should be able to decide whether or not to participate its military in foreign affairs. I think by doing this, we would save money. We would uh, be able to worry about our own country other than you know, other countries. And then we'd also get more people to participate in our government. Uh, we'd save 
money because war costs money and uh, we're in a 15 trillion dollar debt um, yeah there's a lot of school shootings and um, you know without going to other countries we could uh, focus on keeping our own people safe and then um, people would have to vote to decide whether or not the state should join foreign affairs that would help them get more involved in the government that's about it I personally believe that the natural born citizen clause should be abolished from the Constitution for three main reasons um, one being discrimination. Um, Article 2, Section 1 says that a president must be a citizen by birth. Uh, however, all citizens deserve the right to run for president. Um, this violates the basic principle of American democracy, which is equal rights. And America is considered the country of opportunity and freedom. So why don't all citizens get that opportunity? Um, also, non-natural born citizens can run for any other position in government besides president and they can also be a member of the American Olympic teams so why can't they run for president as well um, my second reason is that the natural born citizen clause in general um, it's not relevant anymore I'd say uh, originally it was created to keep foreign princes from buying into presidency and we obviously don't have that problem anymore so why have it still um, the 14th, 15th, and 19th Amendments all provide rights for women and other racial and ethnic minorities. However, they don't offer rights to non-natural born citizens. Um, if a citizen is born in another country and not on American soil, however, their parents are American citizens, they can't run for presidency. And that just doesn't make sense to me since they are technically American citizens. Um, also, the citizenship test. Uh, it takes a lot of work to become a citizen of the United States, so why don't they deserve the right to run for president after all of that work? Voters decide who is loyal and who is disloyal to the country when they vote for president, so why can't they have the responsibility to decide if a citizen should run for president or not? Uh, in conclusion, the Natural Born Citizen Clause should be abolished to provide all American citizens equal rights. The 28th Amendment that I am proposing is that United States citizens shall have the right to grow, harvest, and consume marijuana. This is an amendment that should have been passed many years ago for a lot of reasons. After all, alcohol and tobacco products are legal today and are actually proven to be more harmful to the human body than marijuana. As a matter of fact, the benefits of legal legalizing marijuana outweigh the negative outcomes by a long shot. Let's begin with some facts about this drug. Marijuana decreases the pressure in the eye, which could ultimately prevent blindness from diseases such as glaucoma. Studies also show that lung function does not become impaired as it does when tobacco is smoked and has actually showed an increase in some patients lung capacity. Consuming marijuana can also control the rate of epileptic seizures because the THC attaches to the brain cells that control seizures and cause them to relax. Marijuana is also known to stop the spread of cancer, slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease, lower anxiety, relieve the pain of arthritis, treat inflammatory bowel diseases, and treat many more issues and diseases. Here's another reason. Look at the amount of prisoners that are in prison for marijuana charges. Are the people who committed the so-called crime of smoking or selling weed truly criminals who taxpayers should have to pay for? I certainly don't think so. Or look at it this way. What if we could eliminate the drug trade? Fewer people would be trying to smuggle drugs in the U.S if it were legal, which could also lower illegal, illegal immigration. The drug trade will always be here, but if Americans had weed more accessible to them, they are less likely to buy it from smugglers. Marijuana is used by thousands of Americans every day, so the drug would certainly sell. If the government were to sell this drug and tax it, it could be contributed to our nation's debt. And studies have shown that 10 to $14 billion could be saved every year by the government if they were to legalize marijuana. But taking prisoners out of jail and not having to pay for them as well as selling the drug and making revenue from it? Of course, it wouldn't pay the debt off immediately, but it would definitely start moving it in the right direction. This could also create jobs and business. If the government is planning on selling this drug, they're going to need growers and sellers to work for them. Also, small businesses owners could grow their mar own marijuana and sell it for personal profit. Let's allow the use of marijuana in America. It has proven itself then it that it has more benefits than negative impacts and would make America a better country. In this time of massive 
massive budget cuts, the number one area we cannot afford to reduce is educational funding. No Child Left Behind Act has proven to be a disaster. The cuts that are being made are making the economic downturn worse. The amendment that I am proposing is when making budget cuts, Congress shall not have the ability to cut educational funding. Ch children today will be given will be given a poor opportunity for education if Congress keeps making additional cuts. More than 59% of single tax filers in nine central cities had less than 20,000 annual income in 2011. Without educational, economic opportunities are limited. With better education, there is the potential nationally for better employment opportunities. More than 200,000 jobs were lost since 2009 due to educational cuts. There's already too many children in poverty, so cutting education will continue the cycle of poverty. 50% of attending Milwaukee public schools are poor and sliding towards poverty. I think Congress shouldn't cut education because everyone should be given an equal opportunity for learning. This will better the future for America. For the most part, the needy, for the most needy and move people into middle class instead of locking them into poverty. Congress shall not have the ability to cut educational funding.